to DC today. It's Thursday, and it's good to be with you all uh, here today um, in the Newport Beach office. And we've had a lovely week of many client meetings and gatherings and a lot of different TPG employees from other offices in the office. So it's been a, a good uh, week, a lot of energy. Um, and uh, But I've got a few, few data points for you today. We can kind of go through the market actually opened up on the day, which was which was nice. We actually traded lower about mid midday or so. And part of that, I believe, was interest rates moving up a little bit uh, through the day. We actually got a little better than expected uh, jobless claims number uh, in there. And so uh, we ended up closing higher on the day uh, nicely. It was up 201 points on the Dow. So we'll, we'll take that. Uh, tens traded up a bit on the day. Um, we were up about four basis points. We closed at 414 on the 10-year Treasury. So rates are, have, you know, handily in the uh, in the four percent range at this point. And uh, some of those expectations on, you know, Fed funds uh, futures, where they're going to either lower rates in March or do the first rate cut, or potentially it'll be sometime in June. Uh, keep sort of sliding a little bit lower. So we were 75%, we're at about 54% as of today on uh, on whether they'll cut rates in March. And honestly, whether they cut rates in March or whether they wait till June, what's priced in for most of 2024 is, is assuredly lower. And I think that's that's a good thing. And now we've, we've spoken about that quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, th there's been some consolidation in markets. We're, we're down slightly on the year, not a lot. Um, you know, one percent on the Dow, a little, little bit more than that, um, but, uh, no, but not a lot. And so we're, we're still right there. We've got um, early innings of earnings season right now to report. But what has been reported, about ninety percent, ninety-two percent actually uh, of companies so far uh, have exceeded expectations. So that's a good thing. It's interesting though, uh, fifty-eight percent of companies that have reported actually traded lower. So of the companies that beat expectations, they're um, largely um, you know, mixed, some of them going higher, but, but over, uh, over half, 58, almost 60% of them are actually trading lower. And I think some of that is just some consolidation in markets. And frankly, I think it's healthy. We had quite the run up into year end, and we can call it a Santa Claus rally, but it was really you know, interest rate driven with rates coming off closing the year on the 10-year, about 385, something like that. So moved a little bit higher in rates. Some of that exuberance is coming out. That's consolidation. We're now um, at about a 3 to 1 decline to advance ratio, uh, which isn't really that or oversold. Only about 36% or so of, um, of companies are trading um, below their 20-day. So usually it's north of 50 before you get a little bit more of a washout, and then you sort of get a bottom in there. Again, some of these numbers really just change with what's going on in the macro environment. Um, on the economic calendar for the day, we had Philly Fed come out uh, a little worse than expected. We were expecting a negative number, but we got a little deeper one. So we were at negative 10.6. We were thinking it would be somewhere in the negative seven and a half range. Um, so negative on, on Philly Fed. I mean, generally speaking in the country, Manufacturing has started to tick higher uh, in the month of January, so I, I still think it's a positive, not a negative, but you get numbers like the New York Empire number that was heavily negative uh, on Tuesday, and then a Philly number like today, a little negative, and um, there's just some regional pockets of, of give or take, so, so sort of a mixed bag, but generally um, I'd say I'm uh, you know more optimistic on where manufacturing goes in, in this country, and part of that is um, you know this this phenomenon of deglobalization and, and nearshoring and, and reshoring, um, uh, some of the capital expenditure that goes into goes into that at play. But it certainly won't happen in a month, and uh, it certainly won't happen in every single place. So you get some of these some of these numbers that oscillate a little bit. Jobless claims came in good. I mean they were we were uh, 187,000 versus a 205,000 expectation. So you know th 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 these numbers are. Um, you know, best that we've seen in over a year. Um, so the labor market is still hanging in there, still trucking along. It, it's uh, uh, kind of like a Teflon labor market here. We're, we're, uh, we've got plenty of jobs. You are, you are seeing some of the job openings come off a little bit, um, which we'll take that over on, a, uh, you know, people getting let go any day. So uh, unemployment is, is hanging in there. Um, you know, for some, I think, you know, maybe you want to see unemployment, um, 
go higher so that the, the Fed feels like the labor market is, is balanced. I'm not a fan of, of that. I, I think we can accomplish um, keeping full employment here and, and having the economy cool down. Um, and uh, so, so on, on we go. The, uh, um, the housing starts today for the month of December were, were better than expected. And actually permits were better than expected, meaning, and, and I look at that as more forward looking in housing. Uh, permits were up 1.7% month over month. Um, those are good things. We want, we want good housing markets. Obviously, affordability is extremely stretched in this country and rates in the sevens and high prices means that a lot of people can't afford to buy a new house, a new home. And then also people that own homes aren't going to sell them um, because their interest rate is locked in at 3%. So why would they trade, trade up for a higher cost at a higher interest rate? They're not going to. That, and so supply is limited and transactions are limited and that's kind of where we're stuck here in housing. But uh, it's nice to see permits going up because we've under, underbuilt in this country for a generation, basically. And so having uh, uh, animal spirits in the, in the sector to build new houses, I think, is a good thing regardless of short-term things like interest rates. Technically, the mortgage rate today was, was, uh, came out lower, at least for the week. Was it uh, thirty year? Was that on Fannie Mae's terms? Was six point six percent, so below the sevens, but still obviously higher than what we experienced the last twenty years. Um, but with lower interest rates, I'm hoping that you get a little unfreezing of housing. You know, some people more willing to sell and move. Um, get some price discovery in there. I suspect prices might be a little softer than people guess, um, but hanging in there. Um, all that to say, um, I appreciate you listening. The um, Tomorrow is Friday, so we'll have DC, uh, I'm sorry, Dividend Cafe out in your inbox tomorrow. And then um, I know we've got some existing home sales and consumer sentiment tomorrow, which uh, other than that, it's fairly quiet. In fact, the economic calendar is quiet through most of the weekend into Monday and Tuesday. So really Wednesday, um, I'll be back with you and, and there should be some more to talk about at that point in the economic calendar at least. But thank you for listening. For any of you that still have an NFL team actually in the divisional round, I wish you the best of luck. My chargers are long from that, so I guess I'll, I think I'm going for the bills. Anyways, thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.